welcome to another Design Clips here at W Plus 9. This is Dawn Wolfslagle, and today I wanted to give you a closer look at a couple of our stamp sets that are releasing on May 5th, 2017. This stamp set is Little Dreamers, and it is adorable. Illustrated by Stephanie Serb. At first glance, this may look like a baby set, but I wanted to show you today how you can take it beyond that. And when you pair it with the Stardust stamp set, which has sentiments in the same font and a little sprinkling of stars and such, you really open up the possibilities. The set contains bears, monkeys, uh, rabbits, and they're made to look like little stuffed animals. You'll also see the clouds, stars, moons, and I am storing mine together because they go together. I'm using sample sheets, so I don't have a sticker on the front like you guys do, so I just print this out on printer paper, cut it out and store them together, and then I slip the companion dies that are also available in there with it. That's, this is just how I do it for storage since, again, I'm using sample sets. Some portions of my card are going to be one layer, and others I'm going to use the companion dies to pop up elements, but because some of them will be one layer, I do need a few masks. For instance, this teddy bear is going to be hanging from the moon, and I know that that part is going to be one layer, so I'm going to use Inka Dinka Doom masking paper and stamp out the mask that I know I'll need for my cards. Once I've got them all stamped out, I can then use my scissors to fussy cut them. Now if you weren't doing any one layers, you could skip this step altogether and just use the companion dies. Like I mentioned, I have a couple cards to share, but we're going to start with this one layer background. It's going to be kind of like a surface pattern that only covers half of the card, maybe three quarters, two thirds. Let's go with two thirds. <laughs> we all like the rule of thirds, right? So you can see right now I'm arranging, I'm kind of doing a dry run of my arrangement, getting an idea for where I want each element to be stamped in the end. For this first round, I'm only going to stamp the items that are in the very foreground or will not have any items overlapping them behind them or anything like that. So like the clouds that are just kind of freestanding. I'm going to make sure that all of the elements that I want to include in the pattern eventually will fit and then I will remove anything that I don't want to stamp in this first run. Using the Misty makes this really easy because I can stamp all of the images that I need to at once. And if I want a bolder outline or if something just doesn't ink up right, I can always re-ink and stamp again. Now that my first layer is stamped, I can use my mask to mask off this teddy bear. And that is going to put the moon behind the teddy bear. So it'll look like he's hanging from the moon here. I did the same thing on the right side with the monkey and the bunny. I want the bunny to be hanging from the monkey's tail, so I'm getting that lined up. And I also want the bunny to look like he's standing on this cloud. So I'm going to make sure that I'll have enough room to stamp that. I'll pick those up on the misty door and stamp those down as well. And then I can come in and mask off my bunny and stamp my monkey and my cloud. Now I'm going to be coloring these with Copic markers, so I'm stamping these in Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink because it's Copic friendly and it won't bleed. I finished stamping the bulk of my pattern and now I'm just going to add in a few more elements by hand using the good old fashioned method. <laughs> yes, an acrylic block. These ones are, uh, with the exception of the star, the large star. They're small little accent images, little star clusters and things. and it's just easier to stamp these by hand than try to get them on the misty. Um, so I'm just going to add these in. I'm going to stamp them in clusters working in a triangle formation just to create balance. And now I am ready to do my Copic coloring. I'm going to do very, very simple Copic coloring for this. For the clouds, I'm using BG quadruple zero, and that's pretty much all I'm going to use. You can see here, I'm just doing some quick flicking motions. I do have this at twice the speed. So it's not going much faster than I actually was going. Uh, again, I am just slapping some color down. <laughs> Nothing overly complicated. So I did the same thing for all of the clouds. And now we're going to move on to our teddy bears. Now I'm going to use the same browns throughout. Uh, I'm going to do the monkey in the exact same colors that I'm going to do the bears just for simplicity's sake. I'm going to treat the moon as my light source, so when I do my quote unquote shading, which there isn't much of in this, trust me, um, there, like I said, this is very beginner level Copic coloring. I'm going to use, I'm going to pretend like wherever the moon is, is going to be the light side of whatever I'm coloring. Now I know a lot of people like to do their light, their mid, their dark, back to their mid, to that back to their dark. My preferred method of Copic coloring is to lay my lightest color down as my, where my shadows are going to be. Then I actually skip to my dark 
and lay in my actual shadow. And then I soften that out with my mid-tone. And then I go over the whole thing again once over with my lightest color. If I need to add any additional shadows, I'll pick go right back to my dark again and just put in a little bit of extra depth. Sometimes I don't even bother with going back over that with my mid-tone again. I'll just leave it as it is. I'm going to repeat this same process for all of the bears. Again, I'm using the moon as my light source. I'm going to lay down my lightest color where I know I'm going to have my shadows, skip to my darkest, lay in my actual shadow. And I'm not being super careful here. I'm not going for realism, just color. <laughs> then I'm going to go to my mid-tone. I'm going to soften out that shadow. I'm using short flicking motions for the most part. And then I'm going to go back to my lightest color and give it all a good once over. Like I said, this is very simple coloring. I've really developed an appreciation for the more simple Copic coloring lately. I don't know. I feel like it gives everything a very fresh and modern look. So I did the same thing for the remaining teddy bear and for the monkey. And now I'm going to come in and do the bottom of their feet and the insides of their ears. And for that, I'm using E95. I used the same method on the bunny, and for that I used W0, W2, and W4. And for the moon as well, I used Y000, Y11, and Y13. So let's take a look at the second card, and there I'll show you how to color the bunny. For this card, we're going to be using the Stardust background, and then we're also going to be using the companion dies to add a little dimension to the card. I've already stamped out the images that I need and I've colored the bear on the first one. And I'm going to show you how I color the bunny and I'm going to keep this portion in real time just so you can see the motions and how quick it actually is in real life. I'm starting with that W0 and I'm laying down a layer of color everywhere I know the shadows are going to be. It's kind of like I'm prepping the areas, uh, pre-wetting the paper, so that when I add that W4 it's going to help it blend nicely. So now I'm going to come straight to that dark, which is the W4, and I'm going to lay that in in my deepest shadow areas. I'm going to use this sparingly and just put it anywhere I know there's going to be a shadow. I know that the moon, again, is going to be to the left of this bunny, and so I'm treating the moon as my light source, and I will leave the left side lighter. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow up under the bow there and then right under the ear where it turns over because the top of the ear would be casting a shadow. Now I'm going to use the W2 which is my mid-tone in this case and I'm just going to blend out that W4. I'm going to leave some white because that will eventually be my highlight where I go over it with one layer of my lightest color which in this case is the W0. There's so many different methods and techniques for Copic coloring. Really it's just experimenting and finding out what you're most comfortable with. I tend to do I tend to do it differently every time and depending on what I'm coloring, to be honest with you. But you'll never know what you're good at or what your preferred method is unless you try different things. So I'm just going to go in and add one more layer of my shadow where I know they're going to be the darkest. And I am not even going to bother blending this layer out. I'm going to leave it pretty dark. I went ahead and filled in the ears with the E95 again and colored the bow yellow because I wanted to keep a very simple color scheme for this card. For the background I've gone ahead and stamped out a row of clouds and now I'm going to add that little spattering of stars in the background. And for that I'm going to use the Stardust stamp set and I'm going to use this larger, the top background image. This one has the dots as well as the stars incorporated into it. 
So you have a choice of whichever best fits your project. I really like the whimsy that the stars add, so that's what I chose for this one. I'm going to stamp that in the intense black ink as well. And now I have the perfect backdrop for the rest of my scene. I want to add a little dimension to this card by popping some of these elements up on foam tape. So I'm going to use the companion dies to die cut these out. Um, if you have trouble with your dies shifting a little when you die cut, use a piece of washi tape to hold them in place and it'll get a perfect cut every time. Just make sure that it's a low tack washi tape so you don't tear your project. Before I adhere my bunny with the foam tape, I need to adhere him to his cloud first. So I'm using some multi-medium matte to do that. And then I'll flip him over and add a little foam tape to the back. Now my moon is also popped up on foam tape and that's one layer. So the bear is gonna be in front of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and double up that foam tape and that'll make sure that he is up higher than the moon and that they don't collide. At this point, I was not sure if I wanted to use a die to create a decorative edge on this panel or not, so I didn't adhere them just yet. In the end, I decided to just trim it down. But if you wanted to use a decorative edge die or a border die or anything like that, you would want to do that before you adhered these because you wouldn't be able to run it through your die cut machine with that foam adhesive on the back. I enjoyed creating these so much that I actually made a third design off camera. Here I used the little bunny, hung him from the moon, and used the dream big sentiment that's included in Stardust. I trimmed them all down to four by five and a quarter inches, and I added a little bit of Wink of Stella, some clear Wink of Stella to the moon, and a little bit in the background of this one here around the stardust, uh, the little sprinkles. I added a lot of dimension to some of them, left some of them one layer, and then I matted them all on black cardstock. I think that matting them on that black cardstock and using a simple color scheme really keeps them from looking too juvenile. Like I would definitely send these to a friend, especially anyone who would appreciate these super cute images. And then I took a page out of Jennifer McGuire's book and decided to decorate some envelopes while I was at it. I just stamped a few of the images onto the envelopes using Versamark and then heat embossed them in white. And now they're all ready to go with matching envelopes when I'm ready to send them. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this look at the Little Dreamers and Stardust stamp sets. Remember they'll be available beginning May 5th, 2017. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, you can find all of these supplies, the links, uh, the links to the blog post, all of the information in the description box below. Don't forget that you can find the featured W plus nine supplies at wplus9.com. And if you would like more ideas and inspirations, be sure to stop by our blog at stampawaywithme.blogspot.com. Again, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.